Shalom, good morning. This is Sister Kate. Welcome back, YouTube. I'm just chilling by the wood stove with the Ridgebacks and looking at some comments on my videos. And there was a there was a comment on one of the MGTOW videos by a believer in Yeshua, which is very, very unusual. And so I, I wanted to really pay attention to that comment. And this young person, I, I can't tell if it's male or female. I'm going to assume it's a male said because the laws you know lean towards divorce and supporting the woman etc etc um migdals are just going to never get married and then the whole society will eventually collapse unless yeshua comes first that's it in a nutshell <clears throat> you can go well it's on one of my migdal videos And I had to think about that for a while <clears throat> because my stance in the whole discussion is Genesis 2 says the Lord says I shall make a help suitable for you. You guys are going to be married and then you're going to go out in the world. Hey. People like me. Okay, so that was Pastor Joe coming back from his morning walk in the woods with extras on um anyway back to marriage is something that god established and i had someone in another comment argue with me about that and say marriage was around a long time before god and you know what that person's probably right so you have to then or i had to then look at marriage the way god describes it because if you don't get married with god in your marriage then you do have a marriage and it's a marriage made by whoever, however you did it. Um, and so that explains the whole state of marriage nowadays. Because most marriages are not made with God involved. Even if you're in a Christian church. Because Christian churches do not follow God's rules. They follow a half of his book. They don't even read the front half of his book half the time at least. And so they don't think his rules apply to them, only a couple. And so if you got married in a Christian church, of course your marriage will not last because you are not looking on it with God's eyes. In his eyes, your marriage lasts your whole life. And even if you don't want to look at a New Testament verse that says, what God has put together, let no man tear asunder, the marriage is in the Old Testament were lifelong. Abraham buries Sarah. Um, Moses buries his first wife and marries a second. So that's just, I mean, you are given the examples. So if you want a lifelong marriage, you have to marry someone who believes in God and keeps his commandments. Now, if you don't think you need to keep God's commandments, read 1 John 5. Read 1 John. It will say in there multiple times, people who love the Lord and follow him keep his commandments. And by keeping his commandments, they show they love him and other believers. Sorry, that's New Testament, people. Uh, if you haven't been taught that, you should read it for yourself. So if you follow his commandments and his ways, you will be married a lifetime. If you get married under any other authority, if you have a Hindu wedding, if you have a Buddhist wedding, if you have a wedding where you splash in the ocean, but a non-pastor, non-God following person joins you together like a hippie guru woman from California, her rules about marriage apply. Or I should make it even more general than that. The state rules apply. And what do the state rules say? <clears throat> well, in some states, you can be divorced in a day. Most states will let you divorce because you are incompatible. What is it called? Irreconcilable differences. He rolls the toilet paper roll one way, you roll it the other. And you two will not come into agreement about that issue. Therefore, your marriage is over. Really? I feel like some people out there in the world... Not so much people who listen to my videos, not so much people who are obedient to God, but people in the world fight harder 
on Black Friday to get those tennis shoes they want or that TV they want, they fight harder for that than their own marriages. And there is a trend in the MGTOW movement to blame the woman because of the way the laws have gotten. But in God's eyes, again in Genesis, he made a woman suitable for you. That means a woman specially designed for each and every man. And God knows who that woman is. But if you're a man, you need to be in contract with God and you need to be doing your part of his contract in a marriage. The man is to love the woman and provide for her. He is to work from sunup to sundown in support of his family and to make his bread. If you are not doing that, men, God is not going to give you a wife. He doesn't want to give you someone that you're just going to ignore, abuse, or not provide for it. So you guys are out here spinning in the world and you will not be brought together until you are both in obedience to God. And notice I'm saying to God, not a church. I'll give you an anecdotal story. That means it's just something I know. I don't know if this happens over the whole church. But I know the Catholic Church will take a 30-year marriage and annul it if the husband wants to marry somebody else. He will annul. He will. The church will say, this 30 years you have lived together as a man and a wife, the children you have had, the house you have paid for, all of that is not there anymore, and now he can marry somebody else. <coughs> And because of that rule, I know a friend of mine who's been in the Catholic Church her whole life. And because the church allowed her friend's marriage to be annulled, they have grown children with children of their own. She has quit that church. And I don't blame her. The Catholic Church does not obey God's laws either. The Catholic Church said Sunday is the Sabbath, when clearly God's word says the seventh day is the Sabbath. And calendars say the seventh day is Saturday, folks. And I know calendars don't decide that. But the calendars say it because the Jews have been keeping it ever since it was established. And they say it's Friday to Saturday as well. Guys, <clears throat> you have to be obedient to God for your marriages to work. You have to teach your children God's ways in order for you to be an acceptable household uh, head. Because in the whole hierarchy, it's God, Jesus, the man, the woman, and the children. So the man is the one who provides the, the spiritual uh, teaching for his house. You um, teach your house about God and his rules and how to be obedient to them. And then God blesses you all. So you cannot blame the women, men. You cannot say, I'm not going to get married because the laws suck. God gave you a woman. If you don't marry a woman and you say you're going to be celibate for your whole life, you can do that. But then your life must be dedicated to serving God. That's in Corinthians. It's in the New Testament. If you go to a church and you say you're a believer, you should know that. That your single life gets dedicated to serving God. And it doesn't lay out exactly how that looks. It doesn't say, therefore, you will go and sweep out your church. It just says you will serve God. So there's many ways to do that. And I'm pretty sure between you and God, you can figure out the best way for you to serve him. He doesn't. I, I don't think he minds that. That's one of the things Paul was trying to say. <clears throat> but trying to say, Paul saying a man doesn't, you know, does not need to be married. That whole context, that Corinthians verses about that, he's talking to a church where a man is sleeping with his stepmother. Excuse me. So, he, I'm not sure that Paul meant universally every man should be single. I think Paul's saying when there's issues going on like that, it's okay to be single. And, <clears throat> again, if you are single for God, then you serve God. Man or woman. And if you want a wife, men, then talk to God about it. Get your relationship with God straightened out and then ask for the wife. The state should have nothing to do with your wedding or your marriage. There's, if you divorce, there is a way in the word to divorce. But Jesus did not like it. So it's not something you should think you can fall back on. Um, yeah. So men, 
get with God. Don't get married in the state. Don't get married out in a forest by a forest stranger. Don't get married by your tractor, by another farmer, or none of God's laws about marriage will apply to your marriage. Your marriage needs to be two people who believe in God and are obedient to God. And then your marriage will last your lifetime. I hope this helps. I'm not trying to offend anybody at all. I'm trying to give you a way to go in. I'm not trying to uh, play sides or get people warring against each other or anything. I'm trying to provide wisdom. All right, bless you. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Ugh, what a cliche. Bless you. Shalom.